Hello guys, before I start this tutorial I just wanted to show you a small demo that I've been working on and this will help you get an idea of what we're doing here with all these tutorials that I'm making and this is one of the most recent demos that I have hopefully that you find it interesting and that in some ways maybe it inspires someone to continue what sometimes otherwise seems to be a boring act of programming but this is just to have something to hope for that we will eventually get to do and it's going to take us a lot of tutorials but eventually we'll get there and hopefully you're enjoying this animation and I'm gonna go ahead and start my tutorial hello guys this is Dev Tigris and welcome to my JavaScript HTML5 game development tutorial number five. In this tutorial, we'll cover how to build the tile map editor. In my previous tutorial, I already showed you how to draw the tile map tiles, such as bricks and water. You know, we use this code. Of course, it, it's a good thing to remember that we already added a couple of libraries here. For example, canvas library there's a small HTML object, JavaScript object called HTML. And we have sprite library that allows us to draw basic sprites on canvas. And the world JavaScript file is empty. There's nothing there. And of course we have jQuery. These JavaScript libraries are nothing more than just custom canvas code that we wrote previously to speed up some of the basic functions of our game. For example, now we can create a sprite by simply creating a new sprite object and specifying the file name of the sprite image as a PNG. This helps us to remove all of the canvas programming details and focus on developing our game. But at the same time, the actual code located in these libraries was explained in my previous tutorials. So, if you're still unsure at this moment, uh, you should probably go back and take a look at that. The next thing we want to do is to determine the game loop. If we want to do something useful on every single frame in our game, for example, move the character or play some kind of an animation, we need to determine where that would take place. So, having said this, the game loop is really a central point in programming any game and we need to find a way how to determine that in our JavaScript uh, framework here that we started and we're going to do that using JavaScript timer functions JavaScript has two timer functions one of them is set interval and this is the function that we're going to use to determine our game loop and what's going on in the game on each frame so this function basically takes another function which is a nameless function and whatever goes inside here this is going to uh, be rendered or processed in a single frame in our game and that's how we get control over what's happening in the game and the second parameter, we need to specify how often that happens. So how often do we want to fire that one frame? For example, if you use zero, each frame will be fired as fast as possible without any delays. If you use, let's say, a thousand, then whatever's in our frame here will be rendered every second. So this 1000 stands for one second. So let's say you wanted to render a frame every half a second. What would you do? You would say 500. So this is a half a second. Or every one fourth of a second. That would be, of course, 250. And so on and so forth. Usually in my own games, I find that um, zero works pretty good if you want to push your rendering to um, make it as fast as possible but you might want to also sometimes use 25 or 10 or really low values or even one uh, this prevents 
this timer going out there and using all of the resources of your browser but still remaining quite fast so you just have to see um, and look around uh, what kind of values work for your game here for our first experiment I'm going to use one second now we need to open up some space in this function so we can start typing some code in here and I'm going to actually take this code from our previous demo and cut it out of a load event and paste it into our new set interval and the reason I'm doing this because we need to render all of this stuff on every frame what this event did it only pasted those graphics into the canvas and kind of forgot about it and never did any other refresh functions to redo what's already on the screen but if we put it into a set interval function this stuff will happen every second as we have just discussed earlier so let's save this and see what happens in the browser and as you can see the tile map is being refreshing the tile map is refreshing on its own every second and that's quite interesting now let's try half a second save this and refresh and the animation is going a little faster let's try a really low value let's reduce it down to zero and this is absolutely the fastest way to render on canvas in the browser as you can see it's changing so fast that we can barely see um, what's going on there and another let's say 25 delay of 25 refresh you can see it's about the same uh, it's still working but it's probably not using maximum amount of resources and like I said earlier I usually set it to one or really low value 25 or 10 and it's still going pretty fast for real-time rendering not all games of course require real-time rendering so that's why I say you just have to see for yourself and based on the type of the game that you're developing just try to figure out what this value should be for your game and I'm gonna set it back to a thousand for now as you may know this is JavaScript HTML5 game development tutorial 5 and all of the tutorials are always free but I wanted to take these few seconds to ask you guys to support my independent video game tutorials by Dev Tigress. That's me. And you can do that by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash devt. And you don't really have to do it to continue watching my free tutorials, but certainly it does help sometimes. And we're back to the JavaScript tutorial. And now we're right back into our game loop that we are currently updating every second. The next problem that we need to tackle is you see how currently we're just generating random tiles with bricks and water. And although we are doing it on every frame, this is just an example to show you that there's some change going on on each frame of the game loop. And as I've shown you earlier, we have accomplished that before using this function, window load event, but it only did it once. And we need to do the same thing within the, our live loop without making the tiles random. So having said that, we need to determine the actual tile set data that we're going to use. And that's usually done by creating a new global variable so I'm going to go ahead in the code here and I'm going to call this map and this is in JavaScript array so it's going to contain multiple values for example 0 could stand for brick or water I would say let's use that for water because bricks are solid and it seems to be more accurate to represent solid tiles by digit 1 rather than 0 so for example let's create a row of water and 
remember that our tile set right now for example purposes is only 10 by 10 width and height so in the same way we're going to create a map of 10 by 10 values and I'm going to go ahead and type them in right now so this is our first row we need to do this 10 times now something like this and I'm just going to replicate this three four five six seven eight nine ten so we have this our tiny tile set here created like this and this will actually represent the data of our map and basically the way it works is zero is water and one is a brick so by typing in once in here you're essentially what you're doing is you're creating your first tile map world um, by hand without any editors right now we'll cover that in a little bit but the reason we created this uh, matrix 10 by 10 is that it's kind of a really simplistic way of creating your own map um, by just typing some values and that's really what it's for and so remember this is called map and it's an array and we're gonna go back into this currently uh, for loop that's currently randomizing our values and we're going to draw this tile map instead and again the difference between our first experiment where it just loaded here uh, using load event for the window the difference is that we're going to draw the same tile set on each frame every second and it's not going to be randomized anymore and that's exactly what we want to achieve we want to have control over our tile set world as it's being rendered on each frame without having necessarily having to change it so let's go ahead and do that I also want to remind you that we're going to walk through this loop one by one to determine the value of zero or one and in order to do that we need to create some kind of a counter that will go through each value for example this will be zero one two three four and so on and so forth until we get to the last one which is 99 um, it's a zero based index array so the first value is always at index zero and the last one as you may know 10 by 10 is a hundred but the last value will be 99 and this is because we start counting from zero and not from one so again starting from zero the last value is going to be 99 and let's create a map index uh, variable and just for fun I will format it that way I don't really know why and set it originally to zero which is the first tile in the tile set and we're gonna go into the random loop and what we'll change here is that we need to determine which tile in this set right here is a water and which one is a brick so we're going to change this uh, if statement here but the position will remain the same but the question is how do we get the correct value that we're gonna walk through well that's where this map index is going to help us and basically what you want to do is you want to go into the slope and set map index to zero and then you see how we have two for loops here one within another this one walks on the x-axis so this is the horizontal axis and because this is the internal loop this is where we're going to increase the map index value so although we start with zero here where we have x plus plus in the for statement we can add additional statements separated by comma so that's what we're going to do and we're going to type comma map index plus plus so what this means is that every time we're going to iterate through the tiles horizontally 
we're also going to increase map index and so basically this is the internal for loop that's going to go through this row then it's going to go through this one and so on and so forth and each time there's an increment in the tile as you know as we have just specified map index is going to increase and that will give us the correct index into the tile map so to actually identify whether it's water or brick I'm going to create a second variable here and I'm going to name it tile type and it's going to equal map variable and we're going to open brackets I'm going to specify map index that we have just created and it's going to iterate through the tiles and here we have tile type so instead of doing the random calculation now you're going to compare tile type to the value and again if tile type equals zero we draw uh, we did determine that we're going to draw water and not the brick and so we need to change this around a little bit and so I'm going to save this right now and see the kind of result that we're going to get with these new adjustments to our inner loop. So once again, I'm going to refresh the browser and we'll see what happens. As you can see, we have just successfully drew our tile set that we created right here. You can see there's zeros and ones. There's some ones here and it's exactly what's creating these islands. For example, uh, if you want to put a brick into this hole right there, just change this zero to one and resave and refresh the browser and you see the result. You created that island and by plugging in that hole inside the, the brick wall. And in the same way, at this point in our game engine, we can just do this by hand, specify a little things here and there and maybe um, a couple of things here and let's save that and refresh again and as you can see this is a huge improvement over the random tile generator because now we have a lot more control over the actual tile map here and from now on we're just going to go from here in creation of the next steps which are animation and character movement and stuff like that and notice that we are actually refreshing this map every second here and no it's not changing like in my previous example but it is more or less a live game world going on here that's being refreshed every second we'll change these numbers around later when we actually get to controls and displaying characters on the map but just to let you know that this is updated live and that probably is where this tutorial ends so in the next tutorial we can go ahead and add much more exciting stuff so I hope to see you there guys and thanks for watching and once again, I would like to remind you that you can support my independent video game tutorials at patreon.com slash devt. It's only $1 per tutorial, and it's nothing really, but when a lot of people from the audience start to support me, it really adds up and helps me continue doing this work. So I really appreciate that, and thanks everyone. I will see you in my next tutorial, where we will continue our journey on our way to developing our first JavaScript HTML5 game.